Hey there everyone, this is Jeff Perkins with JD Cutlery putting out our first knife uh, video since we moved uh, the business out to Texas. So we are in the Fort Worth area uh, of northern Texas, moved out of California, and uh, we're up and running again. So I apologize on the delay on getting videos out. We didn't do a whole lot of work uh, from April to well, pretty much the beginning of July. But as you can see, we are up and running again and we are cranking them out. So I just thought I'd throw together a video of this batch of ZT04604624 and 0393s. Um, this is my first video of the 462. Uh, very, very happy with that one. Again, it is a Sinkovich design, the big brother of the 460. Um, the 460 for me was always a little bit small. I've got a larger hand. Uh, my fingers on that lock bar always gave me a little bit of a problem uh, with getting it open just because I pushed on that lock bar and it would uh, put that detent ball right into the blade. So when I got my hands on the Big Brother, the 462, I was very, very happy because I really liked the shape and the look of the 460, but uh, the bigger size put it over the top for me. So really happy to have this one in stock, and uh, let's go ahead and hit these one by one. Um, I will start off real quick with a comparison of the 460 versus the... 462 and let's see I'll do the purple 460 and the crazy gold one so get all these extras out of the way here okay so a shot as they lay down I'm going to go ahead and throw some specs out there real quick first. So the 460 is a much smaller blade is 3.25. The Big Brother is 3.7. Closed, the 460 is 4.4. Uh, the 462 is 5.2. And uh, overall open. Uh, is 7.5 on the 460 and 8.9 on the 462. Uh, weight on the 460 comes in at 2.3 and on the 462 comes in at 3.7 ounces. So, um, when you get them in hand side by side, definitely a difference in size. This one in hand, you can see how my finger, my pinky really comes out to the end of that, where we get this one. My pinky is full on in the sweep of the handle. Got the extra handle out here. The only thing I do wish is it had a lanyard hole, which it doesn't. But it does have that nice titanium pocket clip, which is an upgrade over the steel pocket clip of the 460. So definitely same blade shape length all that kind of good stuff upgraded the steel though 462 is CPM 20 CV versus the S35 VN on the 460 so those are the basic differences definitely size the feel in the hand but man the 462 flips like a champ Anybody with a bigger hand, the 460, my hand, my finger just wants to rest on that lock bar. Makes it almost impossible for me to open it. So I got to pull that finger back consciously to get it off that lock bar and then it flies open. Great little knife, just not real good for my hand personally. But let's go ahead and start off with uh, a look at this. We got a nice purple. Uh, buffed out purple. I've already got some fingerprints on it, but it is a nice buffed out purple. 
sharp looking little deal lock up on this is about uh, probably about 40 percent centering is pretty good on that and it does flip like a champ when you got your finger out of the way so just a cool looking little knife a purple looks nice with the carbon fiber that's got that bronze in the carbon fiber bronze to almost a light red pretty sharp looking stuff you got the aluminum backspacer steel pocket clip nice little knife so there's the purple one I really was a fan of this gold one it turned out great of course I just finger got some oil on it from the pivot but this thing turned out really nice buffed it got a really nice gold out of it real happy with this one probably my favorite out of all these that I did uh, this one we're about 35 40 percent lockup centering's pretty good slight bit towards the carbon fiber but not rubbing and as you can see flips like champ I really do like this design I was always a fan of the 452 uh, the big brother of the 450 of course um, but I really like the shape of this knife this is cool in my book we've now replaced the 452 with a 462 so definitely a new one that I like a lot I really like that upswept blade cool design flips nicely very happy with that so since I've already got the 452 in hand <clears throat> we've got a nice uh, green blue to purple fade there is a little bit of a shiny spot in the purple up here we'll see if people like that if they're if not we'll end up redoing it later but uh, really it is a nice fade overall good looking knife centered up pretty nicely nice fade black versus the titanium side flips like a champ fits in the hand nicely again real good design as far as how it fits in the hand do have a little bit of jimping where you don't have that on the 462 lock up on this one right about probably 30 percent it's a nice good lockup. Flips like a champ. Let's go ahead and hit a couple more of these uh, 462s. This is a high voltage blue, kind of a little bit of oil up here by the pivot with a gold drizzle and gold pocket clip. Again, your standard red carbon fiber on this one. I like the pivot. It did some cool milling there and again slight bit to the carbon fiber side but not rubbing by any means it's a little misleading because of the dark of the carbon fiber it's only a slight bit off man these things flip like a champ really happy with the way these look I do like this high voltage blue with the gold combo really good looking if you look at the point of the blade on the back spacer it truly is pretty pretty darn close to perfect on the uh, centering so that black carbon fiber does tend to throw it off a little bit very happy with the look of that one lock up again probably about 40 percent that's the high voltage blue with the gold drizzle this one is another buffed out green to blue fade there is some purple shading into the blue it's kind of cool looking there is a little bit of a shade right here in the green as well um, I really like the buff out in these it gives it flash you can see that little bit of purple going through there and again there is a little bit of a shaded spot right here but uh, buffing these things out really, in my opinion, is the way to go. It just gives you so much brighter a color. 
instead of the stone wash finish that it normally comes in. These things really do close nicely. The bearing system, again, aluminum backspacer, centered up nicely. Lock up on this one a little bit sooner, about 25%. So good lock up on that one. Another nice choice. Then we'll go from the buffed end of the spectrum to the more matted. This is a muted green that has been stone washed and re-anodized bronze to give you that nice two-tone finish. And then the same bronze on the pocket clip. Definitely a, a sharp looking knife. There's your carbon fiber side. I do like that upswept blade. That is a sharp looking knife. Nice early lock up on that one again, about 25%. And this one, again, has that look to be a slight bit towards the carbon fiber, but I really think a lot of that has to do with the darkness versus the light of the other color when you look on that backspacer it is a slight bit this way but definitely not rubbing Ooh, come on focus back in there we go too much fast movement there but that is the green with the bronze stone wash um, let's see we've got another stone wash version here I'll kind of put them side by side. That's a high voltage blue, also with a bronze stone wash versus the green. And again, just a nice stone wash on that high voltage blue. And then the same bronze on the pocket clip as the stone wash. I like how it gets in and gets those edges with a little bit of extra color. Gives it that roughed up look, but definitely a much different look than your standard straight titanium. Centered up nicely. And then probably about 30% on that lockup. And again, these blades fall into position nicely. The lock bars, it's just a big enough knife that your fingers end up on that lock bar, or not the lock bar, the pocket clip, so you don't have any problems opening and closing these. Really sharp looking knife. I'm very happy with this design. So from there, let's go ahead and jump into, we've got two of them that are uh, my tie-dye effect. So this one we went with a green to teal blue to purple fade and a nice bronze drizzle but we also took it a step further and did that bronze stone wash again that stone wash really kinda adds adds to it some and as you carry a titanium knife that's been anodized you're gonna get some wear on those edges so by stone washing that it hides some of that wear so that's that's why you see me do it some because it does hide the wear as you carry it a lot. If it's something that you're going to carry every day, you are going to see wear in the anodizing on the edges. It's just a fact of life. Your anodizing is not a paint or a dye strictly done with electricity and it's a layer of oxidation. Each voltage gives you a different color. So you got that green a little variation in the green here fading into a blue to teal teal bluish into the purple and flips open real nice nice early lock up on this one probably about 10 percent it looks like it's real close but as you can see i'm putting considerable power on that that's not not an issue and centered up pretty decently. So that's the 
green to teal to purple fade and this one is a purple to blue almost a teal fade on this one I didn't do the bronze stone wash on this one I did mute the color in the background just a little bit and then gave it that bronze drizzle sharp looking little guy not quite as bright as the other one wanted to tone it down just a little bit centered nicely locks in again another nice early lock up about 10 percent a good deal really happy when uh, zero tolerance made the switch from the steel lock or the titanium uh, lock bar on steel blade to all of the steel lock bar inserts really helps with the overall wear how well they lock up and just the overall operation of your knife in the long term if you wear that steel lock bar insert out you can always send it into ZT and they'll hook up another one um, where if you've got a, a titanium lock bar with no steel insert of course you wear that lock bar out and your knife's about done so that is the drawback to not having that steel lock bar insert but ZT has done it right um, this one is the 393 hinder design have a nice green to blue to purple fade this one I did leave with the uh, bead blast so it's just a straight anodize giving you the color got those nice G10 onlays and then your little filler in case you wanted to flip it to left hand versus right hand tip up carry nice knives these do tend to have a little bit of a light detent on them not terribly light as you can see it flips open no problem but these are a little bit on the light side for the detent and every single one of them I got is about the same so just be aware that there is a little bit of a light detent I don't have any problem opening it but if you shake it hard enough <clears throat> that's a really good shake but you can pop it open so and that just seems to be how these are because I got what seven of them in and every one of them the same way so light detent but not so bad that it won't flip does make it for a nice smooth flip once you get used to it I love that two-tone blade with that uh, harpoon on the top just a really sharp looking knife so 393 hinder design CPM 20 CV for the steel and again that's a bead blast with a nice fade this one lockup is right about probably 15 to 20 percent and centered up real nicely <coughs> sorry about that so that's that one then we went with more of a muted feel these come straight blue uh, from the factory this is a bead blast green it's a little bit more of a muted green and then as you can see it's got a light bronze stone wash to it so I figured uh, go ahead and throw one or two of these out here with uh, not the bright eye popping color change but definitely something different than the blue so another sharp looking one flips nicely they definitely close well all the bearing systems and the pivots centering is pretty good on that one as well and our lockup is nice and early probably about 10 maybe 15 percent these suckers are sharp as heck too just working on it the other day I got a nice little cut there got a nice one on one of my fingers just the tiniest bit of pressure on these things they really come with a nice factory edge on them so be careful 
good knives, nice and sharp. Green with the bronze stone wash. Jump into a buffed out one. So this one I took and buffed the edges, give it a little brighter contrast. We got the green to a little bit of blue into the purple. Buffing it definitely. I'm buffing the edges to give it that high pop. A little bit more color. And the blade drops right in. Nicely centered. Again, these things flip really nicely. But like I said, when you hit it hard enough, and that is a really good switch. A standard going like this isn't going to do it. It won't do it, but if you give it a really good whack, without it, it'll go. I mean, you can you can see where it's letting go. It's not that, that detent's a problem. It's just a light detent in comparison to some knives, but you can see where it releases. So definitely not an issue. Just a teensy tiny bit. You can feel just a slight wobble there, but it's not a wobble back and forth. It's not a a lockup issue by any means. That sucker is rock solid. No back and forth or anything like that. Just when it sits in there, because it's got a light detent, you can feel just a tiny bit. But again, all of them that I got have that same, same feel. So that's just gonna be how these are made. But lockup, again, nice and early. About 20% on this one. Blade centering is pretty darn good on that as well. I really like this. I like these G10 inserts. I'm thinking about investing in a, uh, not a steel milling system, but uh, potentially something that might be able to duplicate some of these inserts or onlays so we can get some different colors different materials, that type of thing. So it is something that I'm considering. If you guys like the idea, leave some comments. I think I could do some really nice things with Riot, uh, replacing some of the carbon inserts and that type of thing. So just something I'm thinking about, but again, pricey piece of equipment. So got to weigh all the pros and cons. It's going there or going with the laser engraver, which of course is way more money. But that's, uh, that's it for the first batch. You will see quite a few different knives coming out. Um, I did uh, pick a bunch of Riots up. We've got a lot of the new uh, Jacks and Crossroads on order as well. So you will see quite a few different knives from us over the next couple weeks. Um, I don't know when those jacks and crossroads are gonna be in. Riot hasn't really made it very clear, but I've got a lot of zero tolerance knives. I've got 30 Riots, baby machines, the other new models, the new torrent with carbon fiber, that type, type of stuff sitting here waiting to be worked on. So thank you again for tuning in. Please check us out. Again, we're back up and running at www.jdcutlery.com. And we'll see you on the next one.